sheathing, if that's what's being used on the floor, is adequate to carry that load, which in most cases for residential construction it is. Um, floor trusses can be designed for greater distances than obviously sawn lumber, uh, which enabled more open floor plans with fewer partitions. Okay, the problem that occurs when uh, this happens is that um, while the trusses will easily meet the deflection requirements of the building code, because of the large open spaces, fewer partitions, you run the risk of getting uh, serviceability issues where the floor feels spongy or bouncy. And obviously floor vibration can have a negative effect on occupant satisfaction. Um, vibration, floor vibration is a serviceability issue that it's not directly addressed in the U.S. building codes. The building, US, the building codes in the United States typically try to limit deflection as a means of limiting vibration issues, but that does not always work. Um, research suggests that human response to varying levels of vibration can be very subjective. Uh, in other words, what I may think is a great floor, somebody else may think is a terrible floor. Um, what research has shown, however, is typically lower frequency vibrations tend to be more annoying, annoying than higher frequency vibrations. And floor systems with a natural frequency or fundamental frequency of about 8 to 10 hertz are typically considered less acceptable than those which, with a natural frequency of 14 hertz or greater. Probably got about another, about nine more slides. So another five minutes and we'll be done. Um, here's a problem just waiting to happen. Uh, if you've, a lot of times you've got these islands in this, uh, you know, residence. In this case, they've got what looks like a rather thick quartz or granite top, which can run, you know, uh, shoot close to 20 pounds per square foot just due to the weight of that. Um, you've got a long, uh, let's say that in this case, this uh, floor was framed so that the framing, uh, whatever supporting this is running uh, in screen and out of screen. Uh, so you've got a much longer span, let's say, if there's no beam this, uh, to break that span up, you've got a much longer span supporting this uh, island. And then you get over by where the kitchen table is, and it looks to be a shorter span, the way the, the house is. Um, you can run into uh, differential deflection issues with this, but you can also run into deflection problems because as you excite this floor by walking across it and start the vibration, the dead load from this uh, heavy uh, kitchen island will create a, uh, that low frequency vibration, which people are going to notice. So definitely watch for applications like that. Okay, so here's a actual uh, note that came off of a specification that we got a, a call from, from a trust manufacturer, trust designer, where the engineer of record was saying floor trusses shall be braced with two by six minimum strong backs at 10 foot on center maximum, okay? And we're gonna see that that basically is right in line with what TPI-1 and BCSI would require and that's to limit the perceived vibration. The floor truss designer shall design the trusses to a minimum frequency of 12 hertz to limit vibration effects. Okay, everything made sense probably until you saw that word 12 hertz. Well, geez, how do I do that? Well, there is some guidance provided, and, and I, there was some research done at uh, Virginia Tech University several years ago where basically they came up with this equation, the natural frequency, and this is basically when I uh, step on a floor or you know apply a force from say footfall to a floor, and then that floor is allowed to vibrate and it's gonna reach its natural or uh, its natural frequency or fundamental frequency. And to calculate that, you use this equation that's shown up at the top, which can simplify to the one at the right, which basically is 0.18 times the square root of G divided by the dead load deflection, where G is the acceleration due to gravity, which is 386 inches per square per second squared, and the dead load equals the deflection due to the actual dead load on the truss in inches. 
okay, plug, you, you know what the actual deflection of the truss is due to the dead load, and you plug that into this equation, and that'll give you what the natural frequency of the truss is. And so from the previous slides, what we're shooting for, um, well, per that spec is, you want the natural frequency to be greater than or equal to 12 hertz. Um, the only other thing you need to be concerned with is that, again, vibration is more than just the truss and the, the floor assembly, it's, well, the entire system. And so if those floor trusses are supported in, uh, are attached to a girder or a beam, you want to also consider the uh, natural frequency of those framing members as well and come up with a natural frequency for the entire system. Because you can have a great, uh, you know, design the trusses so that the uh, natural frequency of the trusses meet the requirements, but if the system natural frequency does not, that you could end up with some problems. And so this equation basically where you take the natural frequency of the truss times the natural frequency squared of the girder divided by the natural frequency of the truss plus the natural frequency of the girder squared, squared to that that gives you the natural frequency of the system. Um, what are some ways of reducing floor vibration? Well, one is to use quality materials and construction techniques. An example, glue and screw the floor sheathing to the truss, make sure the bearings are level, um, make sure that you know they're paying attention and following the requirements or the recommendations for the in in, in uh, using the right construction adhesives under for the temperature and moisture conditions, um, following the installation instructions for the various materials. Again, uh, trust manufacturer has no control over that, but again, using good materials and construction techniques can go a long way. Um, another way is to use thicker sheathing, in other words, a larger span rating than what minimum may be required. So instead of using a 23 30 second inch panel for your floor sheathing, maybe you bump that up and they and design for us using a 7 8 thick panel or an inch and an eighth. Um, use more stringent deflection criteria, uh, designing for L over four, uh, live, uh, live load deflection of uh, 480 or live load deflection of 600 or limiting the deflection to less than or equal to say one half inch. Another ways uh, to reduce floor vibration would be to install directly applied rigid sealing, to increase the depth of the truss, shorten the span of the truss or framing member, use multiple span instead of simple span trusses. In other words, if you've got a, an intermediate bearing and instead of having two uh, 10 foot or 15 foot trusses, tying into that, go with a 30 foot uh, long truss that is basically going to be supported, have that intermediate bearing. Um, and then with trusses, we have the great advantage of also installing strong backing. And I'm going to talk about that to wrap this up here in a minute, but some means of that have been tried in, and are still tried to reduce the vibration issues, but have been found to be uh, fairly ineffective would be to reduce the spacing of the floor framing, adding a concrete topping, or poorly installed cross bridging and blocking. Now with trusses, we have a, a great advantage over other framing materials in that we can use or they can install strong backing, but it needs to be uh, installed per the requirements of TPI-1. And those requirements are minimum two by six lumber oriented vertically, Attach the strong backing to vertical web or field installed vertical two by four and attach it with a minimum of three 10D.131 by three inch nails. No gaps, it's gotta be installed tightly. Install at a minimum of 10 foot on center intervals, rows of, of, of uh, strong backing along the span of the truss, maximum 10 foot on center with one row as close to the mid-span as possible. Strong backing should also be con as continuous as possible, and this is where it typically falls apart. Maybe the framer will get the strong backing in and it's running from end wall to end wall or side wall to side wall through that truss assembly. And then the mechanical contractor comes in and cuts it all to heck 
And so you basically have now severed that strong backing, which what it's basically doing is, is it to help mitigate the vibration, is it's helping to dampen that vibration, taking that vibration out through the strong backing to the sidewalls, and you want the connection to be adequate to prevent lateral movement. So again, these items are very important and you know, running it as continuous as possible. Minimum over it should each strong back. If you have to uh, cut sections of the strong backing out, you want to replace those as close to the sections that you, that that you removed, and that shorter section should be a minimum of three trusses. <laughs>